Tucker online because I just type potato, potato, and no one actually knows what I'm talking about. They just think I said potato twice. Now, <laughs> uh, rather than reach under the table and tell you to pull your chair closer, I'll just mention it on air. There you <laughs> go. There's a, there's a you bar just keep in the way, drifting man. away <laughs> from me, sorry. And, and I miss you. I'm sitting in my caster chair just to right. feel it so cold. As possible, Mr. Man. Bitter, where'd you go? We are sitting here proudly <laughs> in our Team Liquid Spirit shirts, ready to cast the Protoss versus Protoss of White Rob versus Millennium Todd, who is now on Fanatic MSI. What? It just dawned on me that he's on Fanatic MSI because oh, I saw right. him on breakfast. You're absolutely and, you know, right. That makes me realize how important it is as a team to sponsor a player when he buys StarCraft 2 because when he gets that free account name change, he's committed to yeah, you for a long right. time. Advertising. EG's, EG's Huck on the Korean server, Liquid Huck. Forever. Forever and all time. Now, it's going to be Protoss versus Protoss on dual site. White Raw was joking, PvP, many luck. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on how the matchup has developed, especially since that recent patch? Oh, man. it's uh, It's been changing a lot. There is a bit of luck involved. Uh, a, a lot of games revolve around whether or not one player gets an expansion up. And, and there's literally windows where it's impossible to know, hey, has my opponent expanded? And uh, if you sit back and play passively and try to build up something like, I don't know, a few Colossi, yeah. and then you go push a little bit later and, and it turns out, the other guy's been sitting on an expansion for five minutes. You're just oh going to yeah. get overrun with units. And I think that is so important to be aware of those feelings in PvP because often people will say, well, this is a coin flipping moment. But you have a lot of innovators suddenly springing forward with some big aggression at odd times. And that is how you crack that feeling of rock, paper, scissors, forcing your opponent in certain spots. For instance, you know that double chrono boost stalker rush? We will talk all about such cool stuff in a moment. But in the left position, currently 1-0 and in his group. The champion of Ukraine in our hearts. Not literally, because that generally goes to Demaga or Kass. It is White Ra. <laughs> Woo! Audiences out there in the other room. And his opponent down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A uh, member of the team Fnatic MSI. But his clan tag looks like M phone pole. It is Todd. Now, it looks like Todd is going to go ahead and build his pylon in his own base. Oh, one of my favorite things of all time. Obviously, if you are doing something goofy and cheesy, you want to hide it. Just as we saw Todd hide that dark shrine in his base, concealing mm -hmm. it from show for that nice, clean win. Mm -hmm. But there's something profoundly sexy about hiding a normal strategy. Yep. What if White Rod gets into Todd's base? What will he see? A nexus and no pylon in sight. It is very easy to convince yourself that there is something ultra-threatening going on somewhere in the middle of the map, and then you can overreact. But keep in mind, with warp gates, it doesn't matter where you build those gateways so Todd cleverly putting it right by the pit of lava and indeed so uh, White Ross scout gonna come up in here and we will see right away if he overreacts to the absence of easily scoutable stuff uh, in the meantime back in White Ross base everything looking very very normal uh, I mean the builds as far as builds go are virtually identical thus far uh oh White Rod is getting a little bit of a scout around sees a gas so he's not going to be thinking cannon rush that's for sure oh he does see this pylon so right now White Rod is in suspicious town Ukraine I would normally say suspicious town USA but he is not from that continent even okay he has found it yes he has he's, he's calming himself down far too good for uh, any kind of simple mind game like that to work on White Ra. Yeah, Sil silly Todd. There's <laughs> nothing special about this in White Ra's mind. Why you hide gateway? <laughs> how, how many gateway you have? <laughs> One gateway is here. <laughs> I find the gateway. <laughs> now it looks like uh, Simulator is going down for Todd. In White Ra's base, it's not because he decided to do a long-range mining operation. No, it's because he wants to be the Bino Protoss for White Ra. He wants to have him to have absolutely no gas. Did you, the Bino Protoss? Yeah, absolutely no gas. Okay, I can dig do you it. Know, do you know about the miracle medical product, Bino? I must have. I, this is a, obviously a day nine joke that I haven't heard before. Well, I mean, it, it helps you with your gas. Oh, and I, that I, kind of and gas. And I don't mean of the Vespine oh, variety. Oh, man. Mean, I, I had, you know, nachos, gummy bears, and a bottle I of Perrier. I am so like tense. That sort of, uh, so take dense. A you, like, totally made a fart joke, and I missed it. Oh, wow. The thing is that before I took a nap over dinner break, I was a little bit more overt with my juvenile humor. Now I can sort of layer sophistication and clever uh. buzzwords on top. 
Uh, yeah, staying a step ahead, as always, Day 9. Robo down for Todd, so he goes one gate Robo and then adds another Robo. Two gate opening here for White Raw. He's going to be going for three quick Stalkers and a Zealot. And uh, I like this opening. You know, I generally like this opening from White Raw, but I think he accidentally misplaced his gateways. He can't get back home into his main. What? He is actually locked out of his own base. Which means he's going to have to four gates. Yeah, I think he's actually committed to this avenue. We see that the Stalkers are now spreading out throughout the map, just trying to clear things off a bit. And if you are in Camp Todd, all you got to do is get a sentry up, and then mm -hmm. you're relatively comfortable. But oh, no, Todd. Oh, oh my Todd, God. Todd, how oh. do you... <sighs> Todd, how do you mess that? Look at White Rock coming in here. Oh, hello. I have a Stalker in your base. It's no problem. And there he is. Oh, my God. Building a pylon like a little quote mark right next to that nexus. <laughs> and now it looks asterisk. like probes. Asterisk, nexus, and asterisk. And that emoticon is going to look a lot like a sad face for the Frenchman Todd. Indeed, it is. Already quite a few probes have, well, actually only two probes going down before the stalkers get cleaned up. But White Raw, he still has that uh, pylon on the low ground. And by just walking up this ramp, he'll be able to get a nice warp in. Uh, warp gates, I think, just oh, gosh. White finishing Ra. for Todd. I mean, I I have to say it. There was nothing special about these tactics that White Raw no. used. Todd should have seen these very yeah. expected tactics coming. Just made a very, very big mistake. You know, he had the gas steal, and, and in that, the gas was never killed. He had to be like, oh, well, you must have units somewhere doing something other than killing this gas. You know, so a big yeah, oversight yeah. by Todd. Oh, uh, God. Only zealots being constructed by White Raw. Kind of an in-your-face, didn't need that gas anyway, did I? No, not at all. 43 supply for White Raw, 28 for Todd. Five workers separating these two. Uh, so I think uh, yeah, White Raw, when's he going to just end it? Looks like maybe now. Wow. I mean, there's, there's this one immortal. Todd is, of course, going to hang out until the very bitter end. He's going to have those immortals. Target fire the obviously easier to kill off stalkers. But he ain't lasting long, my friend, Mr. Bitter. And this game one, very quickly going game. to White Raw. That is not going to be an Executor Immortal. He is but a mere disciple with his two kills and his commander having...